got someone or something crawling around out here. Did you see what it was? Was it a person or an animal or? I can't tell. All I know is that my central light came on and I just happened to glimpse and see this thing running across the yard. A uh, good sized man or something looks like a man. I don't know what it was, just it, it ran across the yard. Okay. You've had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed here just recently. I don't know what it was, whatever it is. It's running. I couldn't catch it if I was going to chase it. So whatever it was, it was standing up. I'm out here looking through the window now and I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. You're listening to Paranormal 411, coming to you live from an undisclosed location deep within the Appalachian Mountains, bringing you the unknown with your hosts David Reagan and Jason Scott, Paranormal 411. All right, welcome to Paranormal 411. What's welcome, up? everybody. And um, what do you think about the new intro? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? It is. Jason made that yesterday. <clears throat> <laughs> it was really good. <clears throat> so how you doing, Jason? Oh, I'm doing good. Been busy how this about week? yourself? I'm good. I'm feeling better than I was this time last week. Well, no. Well... That's good. Yeah. Yep. So you excited? I am. Tonight's going to be a good show. Oh, it is. We got uh, uh, Stacy Hazlitt going to be talking to us tonight about his uh, experiences and his life with the Bigfoot. It's going to be great. It's going to be good, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, but first, we got something new coming up. Uh You know what it is? What is it? I tricked you. It's not that. (laughs) I was like, boy. This Day in History with David Reagan. Thank you, Jason. So this day in history in 1860, Americans elected as their president, Abraham Lincoln whose victory led to the secession of southern states and the long and bloody civil war that lasted until 1865 and ended slavery in the U.S. Wow. That's this day in history. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Paranormal411. Join us on the website at Paranormal411.org. It's free to sign up and become a member. All of our upcoming shows are on the guest and events page. You can also listen to past shows on the website as well. And if you like the show and want to support us, you can do that by becoming a premium member for only $2 a month. Thanks for listening to Paranormal 411. Join us.
Nah, I'm here. <laughs> All right, welcome back. After that short little break, uh, we're we're doing things a little different. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, uh, we're trying to make it as smooth as possible here. Trying to get this new four one one down. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, are you ready? I can hear you through the music. Well, yeah. You're you're supposed to when we first start up. Yeah, when we first start up, we we key our mics back up. Woo! So tonight we got uh, Stacy Hazlitt. We met we met Stacy Stacy in uh, Gatlinburg uh, during last year's. 2020s no no it was, it was this year this year yeah this year's uh bigfoot conference there in gatlinburg and and he was telling us some things that he got going on and it was pretty interesting and finally after phone tag and phone tag <laughs> months and months and months months and months and months i finally got a hold of him and uh i got a hold of him on his uh uh youtube channel he's got a heck of a following on youtube uh, where he tells his stories. Uh, we got him on here tonight. And uh, we go ahead and bring him on, David. Stacy. Yeah. What's up, man? Uh, just you guys tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you in the city tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the, I'm in the uh, city of Columbus. It's uh, kind of, it's, kind of rowdy around here but hopefully everything will go smooth well that's good hopefully so uh if you want to tell everybody about your youtube channel you can and and then uh we can just go ahead and get into some bigfoot yeah uh yeah i've had a new youtube channel for a couple years it's uh it's called uh my life with a bigfoot clan as they want it that's the important part is they want as it, they want not it. as I want it. Yes. That's it. Is they want it. This is, this is all them. They use me for them. It took a long while to understand that situation, but now that I understand it, that's the way it is. So anyway, they, they kind of picked me out and, uh, that's why I, that's why I named the channel what it is. And I try to explain things to people. It's seems a little weird. And uh, a lot of people, don't even want to believe what I got to say, but I live it. That's what happens. Yeah. Well, that's good that you're, you're telling it and not, you know, keeping it to yourself. Cause a lot of people like me and David like to hear it. <laughs> Love it. Well, I know I, I, I did keep it to myself for a long time. Then I used to tell some people at work and, uh, some of them listened to it. Some of them thought I was stupid, but, uh, I have one buddy that comes to my house and, uh, Named Johnny, he he comes to my house and uh, they follow him home. And he deals with them now at his house. He lives in uh, Reynoldsburg, hmm. and you know they just they deal with him just almost like they do me. A little different. I mean, not the same thing, but they let they let him know they're around. They do little silly things, and uh, that all come from one night when he come out to eat dinner with his son, and uh, they seem to like Johnny, and they took to him, and he has friends out there now. Wow! So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him on I'm gonna get him on one of my videos. Just a matter of him finding a time, me finding time to get together to do it. I got him and uh, Jack Quinn. I want to get on and uh, a couple other people. My uh, Sharon, she gets on occasionally, and she's got a lot to say. Uh, she lives it with me, and uh, there's a lot going on with it. Uh, my viewers right now. I don't get as many viewers on each video for some reasons like people are just getting more out with what i'm saying or whatever the case may be but i can only report things as they happen you know yeah. I, I can't make i can't make things up just to make a video you know sometimes i go two weeks or so at a time without posting anything because 
nothing happened, you yeah. know, other than the fact that they're in my head. You know, I know they're in my head. I hear a sound all the time that they make. You know, it's a long story, but I'll get into all that later. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this has went on for since my, my knowledge of it has went on since 2010. But mm. uh, the whole thing started back in about uh, either 1971 or 1973. I haven't got them dates straight because I can't coordinate with everything. Closer to 73, I think. But uh, that was my actual introduction to them. And I didn't even know that at the time. Hmm. So kind of a weird deal. Where do you want me to start? <laughs> um, at, uh, from the beginning, yeah. You can start from um, when when you first started noticing them or, or um, when they let themselves be known to you. Or um... Okay, well, here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at. <clears throat> I uh, I used to have a little shop on the south end of Columbus on High Street, and bikers all hung out there and stuff. And we were sitting, uh, everybody hanging out, and we had the radio blowing on one of them rock stations. This news thing came up. It said uh, they were having uh, tornadoes up in the Dublin area, up, up just kind of northwest of Columbus. And uh, they went on about that, that news report. And then they come up, there was a security guard come up saying uh, the report is a separate report, more or less, but was in the same general area. Uh, we have a security guard up there in Dublin reporting that there's a uh, big hairy animal running around up there. It scares him. <laughs> well, it just so happens one of the guys that hung around with at my shop, he was an Air Force brat. And his claim to fame is he took a dump in every state of the nation. Because his dad, his dad had it in every state of the nation, so he was up from Spokane, Washington, and put so well known about up there. And he jumps up to me and says, "Hey, Dad, I know what that is. That's a Sasquatch." And the only thing I can think of is, "What the hell's a Sasquatch?" Back in 1971, <laughs> you never heard of it, you know. Yeah. So he pursued the issue with me all the time. He said, "Come on, let's go. Let's go find it. Let's go find it." So. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I want to go up and see all these barns that are tore up by that tornado. So we'll go up there. So we take a ride up the road and get up in the Dublin area, and I'm going up these roads. I really didn't know any of them at the time, and they're not the same anymore as they used to be. I wouldn't know what, where I was at when I first seen this. But anyway, we're going down a road. <clears throat> a few different places I've seen some barns tore up. I'm going down this road, and uh, I noticed to my left, they were, I'm in the middle of uh, farmland, and the farmland's been cleared, so I don't know what t what time of year this was, but the farmland was cleared. So as I'm going up the road, I noticed there's a brook on my left side. See this one piece of farmland. It's going down to a culvert, going under the road and off to another farmland on the other side of the road. And that culvert is running into a group of trees. Well, the first thing that struck me was they've got all this farmland. Why didn't they cut them trees down and farm it? Why would they just leave this pile of trees in the middle of the farmland? Mm -hmm. So anyway, as I get to the, now, first of all, I had no interest in this critter whatsoever. Didn't know what it was. Didn't have no interest. I'm just pacifying him. I'm just, you know, just having a fun time running around. When I got to that culvert, something just like, whoa, wait a minute. I stopped and I said, uh, we called him Dingy. His name was Bill. But I said, come on, Daniel, we're going to look at this. And for some reason, I just got out. I wanted to go out and look. So we got onto the right beside the brook. We're walking down this brook. It's probably about maybe two, 300 feet off the road. And I'm following this brook. And we got halfway between the brook and the tree circle. And there was a smudge in, in the brook. And then Dingy jumped up and said, see there, there's a footprint. There's a, it wasn't a, I couldn't tell a footprint. I could just tell the ground was recently smudged. You know, the mud had been smudged into the creek. So we went on up and got into the trees. And I'm walking around, and I'm looking at these trees. And I'm, I'm like, I don't understand why they're here. And it was all grassy and inside in this circle of trees. But there was one tree in the middle of those trees, a mulberry tree. A huge mulberry tree. It had mulberries. I've never seen nothing like it. They were packed on top of each other. Mm. You know, and the only thing I'm thinking is, well, maybe this is why the farmer kept it for this mulberry tree. I don't know. I'm not a farmer, so I don't know what they do. But <laughs> anyway, uh, 
I'm looking around on the ground for any kind of dumpings, marks on the ground, anything, you know, like, now what got my curiosity up? I have no idea. This is the part that throws me. I had no interest. All of a sudden, my interest went sky high. So I'm looking around, and I'm, I looked up in this mulberry tree, and my mouth just kind of dropped. I'm looking up, and as high as I can reach, probably maybe six and a half, seven foot up somewhere around there. I'm a short guy. So anyway, uh, about two foot wide area, a band, a complete band, all the way around that tree of mulberries were removed. There was mulberries above it, mulberries below it. The band was about two and a half, maybe three foot wide. I'm just estimating. And uh, it went all the way around the tree, picked clean. I mean, birds wouldn't have done that. No. Deer couldn't have got up there. So I'm like, well, we went back and told the guys about finding that, you know, and didn't make a lot of it. I think that was my first encounter without knowing I had an encounter. Right. No, knowing what I know now, I would say the foot was standing there watching me because they have that ability. But I didn't know nothing about it at the time. So later on, <clears throat> sometime later on, uh, let's see where I'm trying to lead this to right now, the next move. Okay, what happened was I was married to... I I got I have to remember things through my wives. I got a bunch of wives, and <laughs> like I, I think it was my third wife. I was married to her, and I come out of the bed in the middle of the night from a sleep. I never nothing wakes me up unless it's a sound, and if I wake up from a sound, I know the sound. I was alert to everything, but I was dead asleep. Well, anyway, I woke up out of this dead sleep for no reason, and didn't understand it. So I walked out went to a recliner into the uh, living room. It's that swivel recliner type thing. And I'm sitting there and I'm just dumbfounded. It's like three o'clock in the morning. What am I doing awake? So I just sit there, let my mind go blank. And all of a sudden my whole body started vibrating. Hmm. And it's like, what's going on? Whoa. You know, I jumped up. I got out of this, whatever it was. I had to snap myself out of it. I did something taking me over. Like, <clears throat> so uh, anyway, that got forgotten about, you know, no big deal. I just forgot about it. You know, just something that happened. Well, later when me and that wife split up, I had a girlfriend walking through Eastland mall. Now here's something I need to explain that, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. I have through one of my other wives. I had to go through uh, testing with her and a psychiatrist cause I left her and all this, it's craziness. But anyway, I had to go through these, we went through these IQ tests and me and my first wife were uh, registered up at uh, not the top 90% of all the nation with our IQs. I'm not a stupid person. You know, I have intelligence, pretty high intelligence to figure things out. So if anybody has any questions, you know, I'm not, it's not somebody just making things up. Now else I'm telling you exactly what happens. So anyway, I have a reading disability. I might have a high IQ, but I have a reading disability because my mind works faster than my eyes. And as I start reading, I'll put words in, take words out, change words, whatever, get that second sentence that don't jive. So I hate reading. That's why I didn't get through school good because I will not read. So the bottom line of that is me and this one girlfriend are going through Eastland Mall Christmas time. And I'm walking past the bookstore and I just happen to look in the back of the book there's a display of books. I stopped, walked in that store, and went and bought this book. I don't read. What am I buying a book for? <laughs> well, I bought the book. These are things that, that this all adds up in the end of this. So I'm like, I took the book home and I read it. It was called Out of Bodies by Robert Monroe. Well, I read it. It was the most boring book you ever want to read because he reads about all his experiences doing out of bodies. He has an institute, by the way, or did have while he's alive. He had an institute for doing out of bodies. Some of my viewers have went to and uh, commented to me that they've been to that, what I was talking about. They knew exactly what I was talking about. So anyway, uh, I read the book and it explained that vibrating I had was caused what they call a vibrational state of doing an out of body. Now, the important part of this is there's a practice you can do to do an out of body. First of all, you have to have 
your head to the north, your feet to the south, and in the, and cuff the position, so on and so forth. That's the important part. Now, the important part of this deal is I had the opposite. My feet were to the north. My head was to the south. It shouldn't have happened. So something overwhelmed me into going into a vibrational state of an out-of-body, like trying to show me something. So I'm getting set up over the years here is what's happening. So anyway, I did that, and uh, that got me to the point where I have an understanding of an out-of-body, not knowing anything about the foot yet. So later, I end up, uh, I've been, I'm a city boy. I've been in a city all my life. Well, somehow we ended up buying property out into the woods. I bought 45 acres out in uh, old strip land. And when we, when we moved there, I heard the sounds of animals talking back and forth from one hill to the other and back and forth. I heard that sound before. It was on, I think, the History Channel. It was a Mexican or New Mexico, one or the other, police officer that ran into a Bigfoot, didn't have a camera, but he had an audio recorder. He recorded that sound, and that was the sound. I remembered it real well. Hmm. And I said, that's Bigfoot out there. Yeah, you know, nobody wants to believe what I got to say, so okay. Well, then later, friends of mine come down, want to look at property one of my other friends had down there to get, they wanted to sell. So his name was Bama. He come down and he wanted to uh, look at the property. So uh, my wife then took him down and they went down and look at uh, Greasy's property. And uh, it uh, had a big footprint in it. So they come back, got a camera, went back, took a picture of it. And I got that picture somewhere. But that just told me what I was hearing was true. The foots were down there. Now, that was back in about 1996, not, maybe 97. You know, I'm not, I'm, like I say, I don't keep dates, keep track, but that's somewhere about the right time. Anyhow, then that's when I was totally aware of what I was saying was right, and people had to agree with me somewhat after they found the footprint. Yeah. So then not a whole bunch happened. You know, it was for a long time, nothing much happened. We just, just knew it was there. Occasionally, I would hear the sounds, you know, back down there and stuff, but nothing horrendous. Not There was no loud squalling or nothing like that now. They were just communicating. You know, the, at, hor- at horrid sound, you hear them make, it's only been heard by Sharon one time. But anyway, the uh, uh, my bo- I had some, my boys and their cousins wanted to camp out at my house, out in the yard at one time. This was the first kind of a reveal they did. <laughs> they were out there camping out in the middle of the night, and when they went out, Sharon told them that uh, you boys are not coming in back in this house in the middle of the night, went back in. You're out there to stay. That's it. You're going to be tough guys or you go go live out in that tent. Well, it wasn't long about 12 o'clock. They come beating on that door horrendously. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, what scared them now? You know, I'm just – Sharon would have been, and she says, oh, there's a, there's a bear out there eating a deer, doing something, just squalling and carrying on like these kids were going crazy over it. So I says, okay, come on the house. So, and now where I live, I do have bear and, and a mountain lion and all kind of stuff out there. It's people, it took a long time for convincing people they were really there, but other people seen it. But anyway, uh, we let them in the house. And the next morning, I took him, went outside with him to see where they talked and what they thought they heard. And I didn't see no blood, no nothing, no anything going on. So I'm thinking, okay. I didn't pay much attention to it until later. Uh, later, after I understand the nature of these fellas, uh, what I learned was what I used to call, uh, I called Fuzzy. He was a jokester. This foot was a jokester. He did a lot of things with with us, it was really kind of funny. But anyway, he no doubt just scared them kids just to just to amuse himself. He put the fear in them boys just to see what he would do just by squalling and doing whatever he did out there. Yeah. So he he sent them in the house. <laughs> it was just kind of funny. But anyway, uh, that was like the first first kind of uh, what I would say is a contact of any type that them doing anything. 
Now, there is one exception to that. My dogs used to occasionally, I used to have about seven or eight dogs out there all the time hanging around. People would dump dogs off and they'd come out to where I was living. So every now and then, all the dogs would climb up under the trailer. Back when we lived in the trailer, all the dogs would get up underneath the trailer and get real quiet. You could hear them thumping around. You knew where they was at. Normally, they was out doing and carrying on and all kind of stuff. But every now and then, it was a night that they would just get up under the trailer. Well, I figured there was a bear around or something. And it was probably a foot, and I didn't know it. So uh, one one guy I met lives down there. He was down there before I was. He was about the only two people who lived down there. And he's about three miles down the road from me. And he has dogs, too. And his dogs did the same thing on the same evenings. The dogs would just huddle up and get under his trailers or whatever he had. They would they'd all hide out. So we had to discuss that. And, and we had a discussion that's probably a Bigfoot down here. So anyway, a few little things like that went on. And we was at the determination that, yeah, there's Bigfoot down here. So then the main the main thing what brought them to, to contact with me was, <clears throat> which I have pictures of all this, uh, Sharon was doing, she was going to uh, Newark and taking a uh, test. She wanted to get a motorcycle license. You know, she's, she was 67 years old. She's going to get her motorcycle license. So anyway, she went to take her test. And that morning I got up and I'm finishing up what I was doing the night before. And I'd been in my one shed and I had lot, put the lawnmower away and everything. And when I got out to go into that shed, I had a pile of rocks in front of my shed, little tiny rocks, not real big, you know, just something you want to use to throw at somebody. But it was a pile of rocks there mixed in with acorns. It had three acorns in it. So I looked at this, and then, you know, knowing what I know, I'm saying, that has to be done by the foots. They're trying to contact me. So, you know, I'm, I'm starting to wake up to the fact that, that there's something really going on here. So I went in, and I called Sharon. She had her cell phone. I called her. I said, you know, you ain't going to believe what I found. Well, after I got done calling her, telling her about it, I went out in my yard, and I got a stone in my driveway. It's a, it's a bare stone. It had a pile of rocks with three acorns on it to match that. And then later, I had a car hauler out there. I didn't even look at it, but the car hauler, I found out later, had the same set of stones with three acorns in it. And I'm like, this has got to be a message from some kind about something. I don't know what it means. So anyway, I figured out later that the three acorns meant there was three of them staying there, which I had for a long time. But anyway, uh, this was her first uh, reveal to me that they were there and what they were doing. And after that, it would become quite a relationship. Uh, the... Uh, the one, well, they, like they were there on my property for about eighteen months straight. They never left. But they, I, I won't say they won't left. They did go away for a while, come back off and on. But for about eighteen months straight, they were staying there. That was their home. And <clears throat> like I could go out my back door and holler at them, and they'd come start. They'd throw things down, let me know they was up there. Yeah. But the night times, night times, I would go out at night and. uh sit on my back porch. It'd be just about, just a little after dark. And I could hear him walking through the woods and coming my way. So I'd talk to him. I'd start talking to him as he was coming this way. And they'd get out about, uh, I don't know, bush bush around then around where the bushes were at was about uh, 25, 30 feet away from my back steps. Well, pretty soon I could see eye shine in the, in the, in the bush. And I'd just start talking to him. And you know, they'd move around or whatever, and then occasionally I'd catch some over by uh, my car hauler or, and one behind uh, one of my white Suburbans, which was farther away. And I had, I, they'd come out and I'd go out and I'd talk to them. That was all there was to it. One night I went out there and was talking to them, and uh, this went on a lot. One night I was out there talking to them, and... Uh, I, they, they were up they got quiet. They weren't making any rustling noise or nothing. I couldn't, I, I, did you guys leave? What? And I couldn't tell. So I just walked out in the middle of the yard 
And I just started looking up the sky, looking at the stars, just looking, not saying nothing, kind of walking a little circle, looking around. I never run up on them or nothing like that, but it's just been right there in my yard. So pretty soon I get hit with acorns. I quit talking. They, uh, you ain't talking. You talk, talk. <laughs> you know, that's how they told me to keep talking. I said, oh, you want me to talk? So okay. I kept talking to them. Just like I'm talking to you right now is how I talk to them. And anyway, that went on that went on for a long time. And let's see what some of the other things used to go so on. Have you heard of a heard of a thing called mind speak? Is that how you were communicating? I mean, No, but they didn't. They, I don't know. They didn't. They didn't give me that. Were they but speaking I was, to you? I mean, like you and me, or could you just hear them in your head? No, it's 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 kind of hard to explain. They'd have me doing things, I guess, by just I don't know, letting me know to do it somehow. But I have had mine speak from them. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, that, that's another one. Uh, I'll tell you how this works too. Uh. I was a big NASCAR fan when Earnhardt was driving. Since he quit, you know, since Dale Jr. quit, I'm done. My, 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 my used to be with his dad. And his dad was driving a car. I knew what he was going to do every time he drove. <clears throat> I was that much into Dale Earnhardt. But anyway, when his boy quit, I just quit uh, quit watching. I don't watch anymore. But when I was watching my NASCAR, don't bother me, you know. I'm in watching NASCAR with my, with my son, Josh. And Joshy likes NASCAR too. Well, Sharon's in the bedroom on the computer, and all of a sudden Sharon calls me, and she knows better to call me when I'm watching my, my races. So pretty soon I got up and I says, "What do you want?" And she looked at me like, "I don't want you. You just called me." She says, "No, I didn't." Now Josh is autistic. He has a overwhelming power of hearing things. Most autistic people have one thing. Josh has hearing that's beyond belief. Anyway, I told her, look, Josh, did your grandma just call me? No. And I'm thinking, oh, boy. Well, it's the foot's calling me. Mm. I, I, you know, I, I picked up on that right away. So I go outside. And sure enough, there's, I'm getting indications that they're out there. And, the, and I believe it's the one called Flower, which gives, gives me and Sharon a lot of trouble. But uh, it hadn't been Flower. She's done this to me a couple of times. She uses Sharon's voice to call my name. That's how she'd get me outside. Hmm. Besides, they would knock on the windows and other stuff. They want you to come outside. I got busted uh, vinyl siding on my house where they come up and knocked on the house up towards the top of the top of the eave. Different places like that. I think I got pictures of that stuff too. There's no other way this stuff gets broke. You know, but anyway, uh, it's been real interesting of a uh, trip with them. They uh, uh, now I'm really so much into them. They know I got a lot of things figured out on them. They're in my shop, like uh, I can hear them continually. Now I'm starting to figure out why. But let me put it to you this way: I did a video. I did a video, and I asked. I'm just, it was my question. Why me? Why yeah. did they come to me? You know, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm thinking, well, let's see. I'm not afraid of nothing. So by not being afraid, they're not going to be worried about me doing anything because they can't scare me. I'm not afraid of anything. And I've always been that way. I ain't been afraid of nobody or nothing. But <laughs> anyway, the uh, I got thinking about that. And then I got thinking about, uh, Things about the missing 411, how a lot of people can been missing or, or people with uh, highly intelligent people, doctors and all kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, well, maybe they've come to me because I have a higher IQ. Maybe there's something they have to relate to with that. And then uh, I come up with something else, too. I don't remember what it was. I had another theory on it. But anyway, I'm finding out all these theories are wrong. Yeah. Uh, I have, like I said, I got contact with uh, Kawana epilitis, Lasparitis. I can't remember. I can't pronounce his last name. But uh, like I say, he's a highly intelligent man. 
And he explained to me things about how he's had all his life with him. A lot of things went on. And uh, the reason Jack turned me on to him, because Jack said, me and him have a lot of parallels. And we do. So anyway, speaking to uh, uh, Mr. Laparitis, uh, I come up with the fact that he has had this at birth with them. He's had it. Everything he's done has been from birth. Well, me as a child, not knowing, not knowing what I know now, I used to be able to see things when they happened. Yeah. I had the I had the ability to know things were going to happen or whatever, and it was my normal. It wasn't exceptional to me. It was just well, okay, this, this is what we're going to do, and you just know things, and. It was my normal until uh, uh, I was 69 years old. And the woman behind my, beside my shop, she's into religion and other things. And she came up to me one day and she says, uh, you know you have a gift, don't you? Uh, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I had no idea. So she kept telling me I got this gift. And now I'm starting to understand what it is. After talking to uh, Kawani, he's telling me how this has affected him all his life. It, 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 the aliens he talked to told him this comes at birth. Mm. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it does because I've had a lot of experiences that aren't normal. And I didn't do it was my normal, but weren't normal to, to everybody else. And I've been doing this all my life. So at one time, at one time, now this is where frequencies come in. I had no idea about frequencies until just recently. Uh, when I was in, I wasn't in school, I was just a little kid. Uh, I used to lay in bed at night and uh, listen to my mom and dad downstairs. They'd have somebody over, they'd be drinking and carrying on, but I'm listening to all of it. And everything they were saying would come in a rhythm form. They go, wong, wong, like a frequency. Hmm. And I never told nobody about it as a kid. Didn't say anything to anybody. I didn't, like, this sounds stupid. I, I can't say nothing. It was a little kid anyway. It wouldn't mean nothing. But that's what I had as a kid. So now I'm starting to understand through Kiwani about frequencies. Now I'm starting to understand as a little kid that little, this thing has affected me my whole life and I didn't know it. So this thing that I have is why the foots are around me. Yeah. And it's just, you know, like I say, I have many stories, little stories about stuff, but this is the, the nuts and bolts of the whole thing. And I have relationships with them that, uh, you know, I will tell you what, I have my headstone made up, you know, I'm not, I'm not too young for that. <laughs> and on my headstone, it says, Bigfoot was my best friend and I was theirs. Hmm. That's, that's on my headstone because they've done things for me without me out asking. Uh, we took them out to share her sisters in Tennessee. She just passed away. But they used to do things for her. If she would just think about something, they would do things for her. You know, she had uh, a pile of rocks she wanted to get moved, decorative rocks for her garden. And they were pretty good size, so she's going to have her son do it. She thought she'd have her son come over and do it. She got up the next morning, and the rocks had already moved. Mm-hmm. They weren't exactly where she wanted them. They were all stacked up. And then another time she uh, uh, was looking out her, her kitchen window and thinking, she has a garden down on one side of the house. She said, well, I wish I'd have put that garden over, over here. She got up the next morning, and her garden was moved. Totally moved. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So she was very good. They were very good friends of hers. Now, how I got to them to her, I, this is something I, I uh, put into uh, Steve from How to Hunt. I sent him a, an email on this. I don't know if he ever read it or not, but he's the one that got me going on some good good people. He put me, put my... Uh, let her out and told him who I was, what was going on. I started getting a lot of viewers, but he has doubts about uh, the foots looking through other animals' eyes. So I had to tell him my, my story. I sent him a letter and told him I went down to Tennessee. 
Well, I used to deal with Robin Lynn. I met her through Good Morning America. Uh, one of the guys where I was working, he came in, he's a truck driver, he came in, he said, because uh, like I said, I tell some of the people at work, he came in, he said, man, I just seen something about the Bigfoot, that their DNA is the same as ours. I said, what? Where did you see that at? He said, it was on Good Morning America. First thing I'm asking him is, what the hell are you being at home watching, <laughs> watching TV when you're supposed to be working? <laughs> so anyway, uh, the uh, I got home that night and I got thinking, man, I bet that's on computer. So I looked up computer and that show was on was on the, on the internet. So I watched the show and it came up talking about it. And all of a sudden, this little caption came up that said, "Call Robin Lynn." So I called her. I said, lady, do you want to hear about uh, Bigfoot sightings? She says, yes, I do. And I says, I'm going to tell you something you ain't going to believe because I didn't think anybody had any idea about this stuff. <laughs> I said, you ain't going to believe what I'm going to tell you. She said, I'll believe you. I says, uh, maybe, I don't know. So I ended up telling her everything. And I got done. She says, Stacy, I believe everything you said. Uh you're not the only one that does this. She told me there's hundreds of people that do what I do with the foots. Hmm. I, I must be the only one who wants to talk about it. Yeah. But this, this is what she told me. And she told me that she is psychic with them. She can communicate with them. Okay. So anyway, it took me a few years to, to, to get this part. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm getting this right. I don't ever believe I told her my name, but she told me my name took me a long time to realize that. So anyway, we, we talked for quite a few years, you know, you know quite, a, quite a while, and then a few years we talked. And uh, she told me quite a bit. She turned me on to a friend of hers named Lisa and talked to her a lot too. She gave me a lot of information on things. Anyway, uh, oh man, there's so many, so many stories involved in this. Like I say, it's went on since 2010 that still goes on. But anyway, uh, the bottom line of it is I'm not the only one that does this. There's more people, just whether they want to talk about it or not. I've talked to some of my viewers. They've been in communicate with uh, the Foots. Foots have done things for her. And uh, some people I've talked to, they, they were in touch with Robin Lynn. Yeah. And I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. But uh, my ability with them is something that I got at birth. And I, it took me a while to figure that out. And like I said, I'd done a, I'd done a, a video why me? I think I've done a two-part video about it. Why should they want to be with me? So, never really come up with no answers until I talked to uh, Kawana and he told me his story. And when he, when he told me his story, I'm thinking, oh man, why didn't I think of that? You know, but it's just so far off the off the hook. You know, like I didn't know I had any gift. That was my normal. So, what's to it? You know. But evidently it is, and uh, this is what I put up with. Uh, not to change the subject or anything, but, uh, you know, everything going on with the government right now. Uh, four years ago, it was right after Trump got into office, sometime right after he got into office. Uh, a friend of mine I talk to all the time, he's, uh, he's pretty much into politics. I really wasn't. I just thought Trump should be a president, but that was about it. But, Come to find out that uh, he's talking to me one day, and I'm going out the door as he's talking. He's talking politics, and I'm trying to get over to my shop. And he said something that keyed me off. And I told him, I said, man, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I run it all down to him. Everything that's going on right now, I told him about four years ago. Tribunals. Uh, John Brennan would be a public execution. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, all this stuff's happening. And this freaks me out a little bit that I knew these things. A long time ago, I called out the country would go lawless long before it did, and it did. Uh, these things just pop out of my – it's nothing I think about. These things just pop out of my mouth. And I don't know where I get the ideas at or nothing else. They just come up. They just come in your head, or do you see, like, visions? No, it's like <clears> – <throat> okay, like – I come out of my, I come out of the uh, shower one day. And I got I got out of the bathtub when I come up saying that uh, the country's going to go lawless. And that was about almost twenty years ago, and I could not figure out what it was about except for the fact in my neighborhood, 
had a lot of Colombians and Cubans dealing drugs in there. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a big drug war. You know, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know where the thought came from, but that's what my evaluation of it was. I must have had a drug war. Hmm. Well, that never happened. But we had the lawlessness, like it, like it said. The whole country's gone lawless. So that kind of caught my attention a little bit. And then not long ago, uh, I come out of the shower here at Sharon's about three years ago. And uh, maybe two years ago. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't keep up on time. But anyway, I come out of the shower and I said, uh, Sharon, you know, we're going to be Canada. And I'm thinking, what the hell is that? We're going to be Canada. I mean, we ain't going to war with Canada. What's, what's going on? So, anyway, here about a year ago or so, uh, Putin had uh, had a press conference, and one of his KBG agents come up discussing what the globalists had planned for the United States. Hmm. And do you remember when? Uh, Obama was going down to Cuba. Yeah. Okay. He was going down to Cuba. This was part of the plan. The plan was Cuba was going to come up here and take over. This is this is through the uh, the globalists, like uh, all the people want to take over take over the world. Yeah, I remember their plan. The video you yeah, put out. Yeah. Well, the plan was. Uh, Cuba's going to come up here and take these southern states. Mexico's going to take the western states. And Canada was coming down here. Uh, Putin's KGB agent uh, revealed all that, and that was the plan. Mm. So that's what popped into my head. So anyway, I don't know. This, I'm just trying to emphasize the fact that I have this gift that tells me things. And I don't, you know, it's no thoughts that I have. This stuff just all of a sudden just comes out of my mouth. Yeah. And it seems to be right on the money about every time. It's kind of scary. You have to live with it. It's kind of scary. And I mean, I like to build my credibility up on that due to the fact that if I do get any more things come up into my head, I want to tell people and have them believe it Yeah. because, you know, I want a decent track record for something that I'm doing. And I didn't even know I could do it. I didn't even know really what it was. But anyway, what I'm getting at is this, I believe is the attraction this gift that I have came to me from birth, and I think this is the attraction I have for the foots that they have for me, for the foots, because whatever it is I have, they can deal with it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, <laughs> uh, one of the problems we had, uh, this is, this is going to throw everybody, I guess. It was a female, and we called her Flower. And she wanted me for a mate. Doesn't make any sense. But anyway, she used to be real threatening towards Sharon all the time. And I had called Robin Lynn about that and talked to her about it. And told her, I said, this ain't right. Something's going on. She, Sharon feels like, like Flower's threatening her, always wanting to strangle her and stuff. And she let Sharon know that. Mm-hmm. Flower did. So... I called Robin Lynn, talked to her. I said, Robin, what's going on? And Robin said, well, I don't know, but I'll look into it. I said, okay. So I got back with her. I said, what's up, Robin? Well, she said, it seems that what we call Flower, we had three that stayed here. We had Flower, Fuzzy, and Clyde. Them the ones that stayed on the property all that all that 18 months or so. And this is how I know Robin Lynn was truthfully, honestly, in touch with them. Uh, they were always here. And when I had that communication with her about uh, Flower, she said, uh, seems that uh, Flower wants you for a mate. I'm like, what? So the last thing I want to do is to have some five, 600 pound uh, female Sasquatch pissed off at me. So I had to do this gently. I said, Robin, uh, you tell her, it won't work between us. I can't live in her world. She can't live in my world. That's fair. So she did. She went and talked to her, and Robin told her that uh, what I said. And then Robin explained to her. She says, uh, Flower, you're, you're going to live maybe 500 years, which that's their life term. 
their expansions, and they go to almost 500 years. Hmm. She says, she says, Stacy won't live that long. You'll be without a mate. And so I asked Robin, I said, well, my biggest curiosity was, how did she act? Was she mad? <laughs> and Robin said, no. She just shook her head, no, 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 and walked away. Hmm. So I don't know where that went from there, but she was around. Well, as of that day, the three of them were not on the property no more. And that's how I know Robin was totally in touch with them. So then, since then, Flower's been back. I don't know if if Clyde and Fuzzy have or not, but I know know that uh, Flower has been back. She's been here in this house. She's done things in this house that uh, is just unbelievable. Hmm. And uh, they, uh, like, I'll give you a small example. Sharon went away one day, and she has a daughter here that's Michael Vinegar has to have uh, constant constant watch over. She's dead fast. And uh, Sharon gets a nurse. And when she gets a nurse, she locks the basement, locks everything up, and goes away. But when she come back, they walked in the house, and all of a sudden, the, dry, the washing machine in the basement turned on. Hmm. And like... Sharon asked Donna, she said, Donna, did you do the wash? She says, no. That machine, if it had been running, it had ran itself out long before they ever got home. But it just turned on right before they got there, or when they got there. So come to find out, it was all my clothes. All my clothes are being washed. Mm. Now, when I told, I told uh, the flower that she couldn't live in our world and I couldn't live in hers, she used to do a lot of things around here to try to prove that she could live in this world. Yeah. Uh, like uh, one of the things she used to do, like uh, Sharon, Sharon would uh, leave a hairdryer plugged in, in a wall. And it burns me up because I was out to my tra- trailer one time before I put the house up. And hair dryers plugged in right to share the bathroom. And I'm brushing my teeth and all of a sudden it wasn't turned on, but it caught on fire. <laughs> I happened to be there to catch it. I wouldn't have had a trailer to live in. So I'm on share all the time. Unplug the the hairdryer. Unplug the hairdryer. Well, one time, uh, Josh was is is in sitting on the toilet, and the hairdryer's plugged in. And all of a sudden, the cord starts shaking and shaking and carrying on. And like I said, Josh is autistic, and he has abilities to know a lot of things. He's a very smart child, just has little problems. He hollered out to Sharon. He says, Sharon, flower shaking the cord on a dryer. Well, that's one time it happened to happen again, too. But uh, she used to do stuff to get Sharon in trouble with me. So these <laughs> it's hard to explain all this crazy stuff, but I love it. That's the way we live. It's what we got. Yeah. So well, she have, hasn't been around. Have So have, what? Have they ever got... I know you said that she was kind of uh flower was kind of uh aggressive toward toward your wife or toward, yeah. Yeah. But have they ever been like just aggressive for no reason? Have they ever done what for no reason? Been aggressive and you know, been No, no, there's no 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 no, just just thought things only in her head. They've done nothing nothing bad. Nothing at all bad. Like I say, they've done things for me and uh, without me even knowing it. Uh, one time we went to, uh, we went to, uh, I think it was Norton Races down in uh, Lowe's. And before we left, uh, Sharon's uh, niece was down at the house and she was trimming down the driveway and cutting bushes back. I got a, I got a long driveway. And she was cutting the bushes back so they wouldn't hit the cars or whatever. And piled them up in the driveway and that eventually she clicked picked them all up and everything. Well anyway, when she was out there doing that, she heard two foots talking. And this is how I got their voice described to me because I can never put a name on it when I hear her hear them talking. And I used to tell people, that sounds like a horse went at a distance or something. You know, I just I couldn't name it. So anyway, she she's doing this driveway and she comes up the hill and she hears two of them up there talking. So she knows they're friendly, so she just hollers up to them and says, I'm not going to bother you. I'm just cleaning up the yard. And 
Anyway, when she got up to the top, they took off running through the woods, knock, almost knocking trees over. And she says, man, you know, that, that impressed her, but she couldn't understand why they ran from her. Yeah. So anyway, she named their voice. She said they sound, their, their voice sounds like dolphins when they come up out of the water and do that squeaking sound. Yeah. She says that's what they it reminded her of what she heard. Well, that's about right. That's about as best I could describe it, too. So yeah. anyway, uh, we went to uh, Lowe's that weekend, and when I come back from Lowe's, I pulled up to my gate. I have a lock on my gate so nobody gets up there. I, I get out to unlock my gate, and I look, and I got a big pile of shrubbery in my driveway. Hmm. Just piles of shrubbery. And uh, I'm like, I got to clear all this. And I had, where the, who the hell? Then I realized, this is what Donna was doing. That's what they was going to do. Yeah. So they try to help. They try to help. Uh, I'm going to tell you another good one that happened that really it blew my mind. Uh, I have two sons. One was, was living out by there at the time. The other one, he'd come out all the time. And I had, me and Sharon had been talking. We was going to get new gravel put down the driveway. It was time to get it redone. So anyhow, one afternoon we come home. or We got, we got out there late in the afternoon. I got a big pile of gravel in the middle of my driveway. Now mm-hmm. the gate's locked. It's about uh, probably two, 300 feet up from the gate. And there's about a half a ton of gravel in my driveway. Now, I'm sure nobody went and shoveled from a truck and went all the way back here and dumped it. I'm sure no truck went around my gate and it is. That's an impossibility. And uh, somehow I ended up with about a half a ton of gravel in my driveway. Huh. And my boys looked at it and they said, there's no way somebody could do that for you. And <laughs> my honest to God thought is, this is something the Foots did. Yeah. They do things like that. So... You know, like I say, it's, it's it's a crazy thing, but I love them to death. I think they're great. Sharon thinks they're evil. She thinks they're demonic. Really? Yeah, she thinks there are a lot, a lot of demonics involved in it. And I don't see the demonics. I can see they have powers that are supposedly evil in the Bible. That's fine. But what I'm seeing is they were brought here by aliens thousands of years ago. And I said, that's a long time ago. And do you think they, they need were, you to think. They, do you think they were brought here for what reason? Okay. That's, that's what we'll get to. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, let's, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, okay. When we come back, we'll talk about that. Cause we like talking about aliens too, you know? Oh yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we'll let you know. I'll be here. Okay. okay. Uh, We're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to continue talking with Stacy Hazlitt. What do you think? I think this is a good conversation. It is. A lot of of stories here. Yeah. So um, this is uh, Jason and David, Paranormal 411. Yeah, and I was going to tell you, uh, if you want to listen to the show from the beginning, all you have to do is go on Google and search paranormal 411 and we're going to pop up there and you can listen to us uh from any of the the podcast things or you can go to the website project or project <laughs> I about did it. You did it paranormal411.org and listen to it there that's right and or any of the spreaker or podbean or yeah, about any any podcast yeah you know place you can listen to podcasts we're going to be on there itunes spotify heart yeah audible yeah we're everywhere so but we'll be back right after these quick messages thanks for listening to the show you can find us on facebook and twitter at paranormal 411 Join us on the website at paranormal411.org. It's free to sign up and become a member. All of our upcoming shows are on the guest and events page. You can also listen to past shows on the website as well. And if you like the show and want to support us, you can do that by becoming a premium member for only $2 a month. Thanks for listening to Paranormal 411. Join us.
All right, we're back. Back. Nice little quick break. Yep. Nice little quick break. So you're listening to Jason and David, Paranormal411.org. Uh huh. On all kinds of platforms. Find us. And um, we're talking to Stacy Hazlitt about his life with the Bigfoot. As and they want it. As they want it. And, um, like he said at the beginning, you know, um, he could only tell what's happening to him. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people are born with, I think, abilities to. Just, I think so. I mean, like paranormal. Yeah, because, um, I mean, you know, I have some strange thing where, you know, times I have very good ability to see dead people. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and people may roll their eyes at that, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So. <laughs> oh yeah so we're gonna bring him back on he's gonna we was talking about it was about to you just ask him a question yeah uh why the aliens he thinks that the aliens brought the bigfoot here thousands of years ago all right so here we are stacy yeah right, right here back. we're back uh here's what we got uh the tie to the uh, aliens. Uh, I watch, you know, I used to watch a lot of History Channel. I, I'm, I'm really well versed on a lot of things that go on. I watch the alien, a, alien, uh, and ancient aliens and other stuff on the History Channel and different things. I try to catch a little bit of everything. One time, a show come on on the ancient aliens, and they talked about uh, they had found gold mines thousands of feet deep, thousands of years old. And as soon as they said that, I'm thinking, that's what the Bigfoot's for. They mined the gold. I knew they were involved in it, but I was not right on the money. But they were there then. Now, I don't know how long ago it was, but anyway, the woman, remember I told you about the woman, Lisa, that I talked to? Yeah. Robin Lynn's friend. Well, she told me one time, she said, told me a couple things. If the foots want you someplace, they will get you there. And I'm fully aware of that. I am now, now that she said it, and I'm understanding everything goes on around me. Yeah, the foots are getting me places. That's where they want you to be. For some reason, you'll be there. So anyway, I was out uh then Sharon went with her daughter and her husband, went camping, went down, not camping, we went down to uh, visit her sister's grave in Tennessee. <clears throat> and on the way back, Mike, uh, her daughter's husband, wanted to uh, show us a couple things on the way back in Kentucky. Uh, and one of them was a thing called the Big Bone Lick. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or anything, but it's a place where they have a lot of dinosaur bones. It was a pit where they, they found dinosaur bones and other stuff, I guess. Anyway, we went down there to see this. And, like, I was I was really wanting to get home. I didn't really want to go touring, but we followed him. We went. And we go down there, and uh, Sharon couldn't really walk around. She wasn't feeling real good. So we went down, and we were just sitting there by, by where all they have bones are and everything. And they have actual bones inside the museum thing. Now, now is this so, in Tennessee? I, it's, I think it's in Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, this is on our way back from Tennessee. See, I I have a clan in Tennessee that I visit too. That was at Sharon's sister's house. That was another clan that I deal with. But but all that goes into another story. That goes about the, like I was talking about with the owls and stuff. I got so many stories that get so tangled up. (laughs) Anyway, anyway, we went down to the Big Bone Lick. And like I said, if if the foots want you someplace, they get you there. So we went to the Big Bone Lick. And we're there, and all of a sudden, it all hit me. Nobody has ever asked asked the question of why these foots are so powerful, why they have this voice that can just upset your stomach and turn you sickening inside. They have the power to do many things to you physically with their mental. And like to throw a rock, they can take a huge rock, and I mean, they can pinpoint exactly where it's going to go. They, I've seen some of that. So when we got down to the big bone lick, it hit me. It all come right on out. The aliens, 
thousands and thousands of years ago before we had any civilization here at all. They came here to mine the gold from the earth. They use it in whatever they do out there with their, protect their uh, facilities from the sunlight or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Any, anyway, the flips were built to protect them from the dinosaurs. This is what hit oh. me when I hit at the big bone lick. Nobody's ever called this out before, but that's how long ago they were here during dinosaur age. You know, this is not, there's no civilization back then. Mm-hmm. So I, they always called themselves the first people. And they were They're the first people. They are as human as you can get. I don't know about exactly on the DNA. I mean, it's pretty close. I, I don't know if it's exactly the same as ours. but Yeah, that would explain a, a lot of, because a lot of DNA they get, it does have human DNA in it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was what the thing that article was on about at uh, Good Morning America. They got me to watch that show. They talked about the human DNA <clears throat> being the same as the Bigfoots, which wasn't ever supposed to come out of the lab. I got I got a copy of it. Uh, Robin, you know, Rob, and Robin or uh, Lisa once sent it to me. I got that. But anyway, uh, going down there to the Big Bone Lick explained to me exactly why. The foots have the powers that they have. They could make, a, they could detour a dinosaur with the, with just their roar. You know, they can uh, turn their stomachs with with whatever whatever they do, and then they have the ability to take a huge rock and knock the hell out of them. Yeah. I mean, why why would these animals have these powers? Well, and this just explained it. I got down there and it just all come to me. These guys were their bodyguards. The aliens come to mine the gold, and the foots bodyguarded them to keep the dinosaurs away from them. Hmm. So that's one you haven't ever heard before, I'm pretty sure. But uh, no. that's what I come up with. I have, so I haven't I heard to, that one. Yeah, but, that's, no, that's I, different. But, you know, I actually, I did listen to you. Uh, did you say that on one of your videos? Yeah, I did. I, I did. I, I did hear you talk about it because I mentioned it last week in in uh in our show that I knew yeah. somebody that that thought about that's why they were here. Yeah, I, I put on, I put on one of my videos when, for, after I first realized that you know like I can say I give up everything I can to my, to my viewers and and they're my friends. Yeah, and I don't try to hide nothing from nobody. I give it out the way it is and as truthful as I can give it. And. uh Anyway, that, that one throwed me when I got down there because, like, and it proves the fact, like, what Lisa told me. If they want you somewhere, they will get you there. I had, what I, what I want to go to a big bone lick for, what the hell is that, you know? And I got there, I found out what it was. And this was their idea. Like I said, my life with them as they want it. And that's what they do. They get me and, and everything comes to me. So that's what I got with them. Anyway, uh, that was long before any civilization was here. You know, the, the, there's talk about the Anunnaki's, how they created humans to be their slaves and all that kind of stuff. I've caught some of that on some of these shows. And Anyway, this is what I come up with as far as what the, the foots were developed for. Well, they end up being here, staying here, and uh, they uh, – oh, I, I haven't even talked about my portal yet <laughs> – I got so much stuff, man. I can't. I can't get all the sin tonight. I don't think. Yeah. Now, if you if you talk about the portal, that's where you're getting into my kind of stuff. I like that dimensional yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, that's the other part. Uh, I I used to, I had camera set up at my place when I first seen the, the first seen the signs of the foot being there. I said, "Well, I'm gonna get them on camera." I had cameras up all over. They don't get in front of no camera. It ain't happening. It's not gonna happen. So. Anyway, uh, on one of my cameras, it looked like out in the woods, there's a piece of glass up in the trees. And I'm like, what the hell is that? It must be a a glitch in the camera. Sharon looked at it and she said, that's a portal. Hmm. She snapped right up on it. You go outside, you can't see it, but it would show up on on this camera. So anyway, it's not there now. I end up setting uh, some overseas containers where I put my machine shop and other stuff out there. and. 
a uh, it's gone. It's not there. I, I think they just moved it anyway. They they do that. They move their portals. Yeah, I, I think so, that's I think that's how they travel really back and forth and without being seen. Well, there's where they leave. There's more critters come through there than just the foots. That's I, I, that's what I was getting. Have you seen uh, some videos from Scott Carpenter about? Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen some of that. That, that, that my 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 uh, portal's not like what he's showing. Okay. Mine was permanent. It stayed there. Like uh, one evening we come home, and I think it was a weekend. I just got off work, and I just come out out to the house, and we pulled up the driveway, and I got this critter running around my yard that is so funny looking. It looked like a one winged oversized chicken. <laughs> Didn't have no idea. Oh, it was funny looking. Sheriff seen it. I seen it. I jumped out the car and went to chase this damn thing down. Let's see what the hell it was. <laughs> I mean, probably stupid of me. I probably got my arm cut off or something. I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Well, this thing ran around my yard, got around behind things that ended over right where the portal's at. And I couldn't see it no more. It's gone. Hmm. I mean, this thing was too big to hide in the woods, in the brush where I wouldn't have seen it, but that's the direction it went. <clears throat> and it got over where the portal was at, it was gone. Plus, I have uh, people in a place called Saltillo. I probably didn't shoot, use the name, but anyway, it's not. It's about five miles down the road from me, and there's a family down there that deals with the foots down there, and they've been doing it for a while. So when when I had my, it's like when I had my uh, overseas containers put in, I had electricity put in for my machines. And I asked the two guys down there, I asked everybody down there in my county, hey, you know, hear anybody Bigfoot sightings? One guy says, no, we heard not about none of that. And the other guy says, oh, yeah, you remember the guy over there in Salt Tillow? And uh, he says, yeah, that guy don't know nothing. <laughs> so he explained to me uh, where the house was at. So I went down there one evening and I got to this guy's house and I says, are you the guy with the Bigfoot? He says, what do you want to buy? I says, what? <laughs> This guy was selling everything he had for any bit of money he could sell it for because he was leaving. Hmm. And they had, they had had Foots come down this place quite often. They used to come down his back fence and shake his fence and all that. He could deal with that. And he had this one critter come through his front yard. Wasn't much taller than me. It was about maybe about five, five eight, something like that. It had a huge head, great big teeth. Big snarly teeth sticking out of it. And whatever it was, it went up to him and growled in his face. Hmm. He left. He said that was it. He left. I mean, he was dealing with the foots coming down, but he left. But you, I mean, down there where I'm at, you can't hardly get anybody to talk about the foots down there. A couple people, but not very many. But uh, anyway, he moved out. So I went back. I went back the next day anyway. I was going to talk to him. I didn't think he was going to leave that night. I went back the next day to talk to him. He's gone. Wow. And not much of his stuff was sold, but he left. His daughter lived up around the corner, up on up on a uh, up on the hill down from her. I ended up talking to her. She said, "Yeah, Dad left. He went back to Kentucky or someplace. I think she said Kentucky, but he went back to Kentucky. He wouldn't he wouldn't stay here no more." So anyway, I talked to her a little bit. I haven't been back down there since, but uh, yeah, there's more things come through the portals than Bigfoot. Uh. I'm not sure about the dog man yet. I'm looking into that. It's got to be from another world, but I'm looking into it because I got him at my house. So that's just yeah. another little, little issue I'm going through. But yeah, I got the portal, uh, which is, it's been moved. I'm pretty sure it's not far away, but it's been moved. What happened was I own 45 acres with old strip land. And there's about 3000 acres around that area that used to belong to, to the mining company that they sold out and, People bought the land and they come back around wanting to buy it back because they could go down another 200 feet deep. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they offered me about a quarter million dollars for my property. And like, no, my friends live here and you ain't getting this. That was because of my foot. So I was not letting go of my property. Yeah. So anyway, most of the people around me did. And uh, it's a totally different area now. When I first moved down there, it was 3,000 acres of nothing but woods. It was beautiful. It's rough terrain. It's been all cut up. You know, I don't like farmland. That ain't my thing. And I don't live on the side of a mountain. I was in a perfect spot for me. 
So anyway, I still got mine and, uh, most, most of them around there are gone. You know, everybody sold out. My next door neighbor, he only sold some of his acreage off. And that's as far as they went. They moved on down the road now. They're back stripping down farther. But uh, because of that, uh, you know, I wouldn't sell my property over to Foots. If it wasn't for the Foots being there, they could have had that. For that money, they could have had it. But, you know, no, not with my Foots. I'm not doing that. It meant too much to me. I mean, you get attached to them. So this is what happens. You know, I got I got a story I could tell you about uh, one of the foots of my truck. Yeah, they go th- th- a lot of times they go with me. Would you believe it if I told you I took a foot to uh, Michigan International Speedway? <laughs> I yes, don't sir. Know. Maybe tell it, tell a story. Well, I'm telling you, we took one with us, and uh, it was unbelievable. She wouldn't let nobody see her, not that she stayed cloaked, but she was there. She was there. Uh, Oh, so they can cloak? Oh, yeah. I, didn't I mention that? No. <laughs> oh, my God. That, they, could, that could explain this, a lot. Let me explain this. Remember I told you the mulberry tree? Yeah. They were. There was a, a foot standing there. I could not see him. He was cloaked. Hmm. But he was there. That was my introduction to him. Okay. They, Sharon has caught him. Okay. Remember, I told you I have a lot of cameras out there. I'm working out. I got one of my Lincolns. I'm sitting out on my driveway up by the house, and I had the hood up. I'm doing something. I forget what I was doing, looking at something. I think the steering was tight. So I'm looking at my uh, steering arm and stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm down underneath the hood. And Sharon's over on a picnic table. And she's watching me, and all of a sudden, right behind me stood Flower. Hmm. She was right behind me. I did not know it. And Sharon said she couldn't even talk. She didn't know what to say. She couldn't holler. She couldn't do nothing. Anyway, I, I made a movement like I was getting up. The flower turned and walked away. Now, where she was standing was out of the view of my camera. But as she walked away, she walked in towards the view of the camera, but then she dissipated, just like you see on Star Wars, gone. So she cloaked herself and left. Wow. Sharon seen him do that. Seen her do that. Well, not maybe it was her another one too, but she's seen that happen a few times. They can cloak themselves. They have the ability. We had one that come here to this house here in Columbus that wasn't supposed to be here. Oh, this is a good story. Uh, her name was Qual. This story goes back into back into Lisa's stories. One time I talked about going to Tennessee or something. How did that work? I'm trying to get the thing chronologically right. Lisa sent me a, a, a clipping, emailed me a clipping from a newspaper from back in the 1800s that they talked about this big white monster that was hanging around and scaring everybody. Supposedly, they found it dead under a, a tree that pinned it down. A tree had fallen on it and killed it. Hmm. That's that was in this article. <clears throat> so, being that they live five hundred years, I didn't even know. But being that they live five hundred years, I've had at my house. I've had probably about forty foots come through there because they like to listen to me talk at night. Like, let's go listen to that crazy old guy that talks to us. You know, I was their I was their spectacle. <laughs> so I had a lot of them show up different times, just different ones go through, and you know their personalities. I mean. You don't you don't get to see them. They stay in the bush, but you know their personalities by the things they do, the sounds they make, and stuff like that. I've had two of them give me their name. One of them was named Jimmy. He called himself Jimmy. And what was that one's name? Oh man, that's a, that's <laughs> about me. that's about like when you get a telemarketer and they're from India and they say, "Hello, my name is Jimmy." <laughs> yeah, that, they just get out there. They were going out there. They make sounds at night. And he was going out there going, Jimmy, 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 like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was his name. Uh, uh, oh, I remember the other one now. The other one was, the other one would go, um, Pete. <laughs> so his name was Pete. He put that out. Now that, that was, that was, uh, not mind speak. That was what he brought right out. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's what he was vocalizing. Yeah. So, uh, 
we got two of their names, which I put down on the video. Does anybody name, name their uh, pet Sasquatch? They name them Pete or Jimmy or whatever. I come to find out that somewhere on one of these shows I watched, they call the Bigfoot Jimmy. Hmm. They call they call him Jimmy. I just found that out not too long ago, but that's what the that name that they use for it. There's one of them Jimmys out there or something. I can't remember where it was at. Down south, I think. Hmm. But any, anyway, we've had two of them give, give us names. And just a lot of stuff. Man. I mean, chirps and, you know, real nice sounds they make. Just be friendly. Anyhow, Sharon did hear a big roar one time. Sharon's out laying in the sun. And across the road from us is the mining, mining lab uh, land. So we don't go over there. And they leave trees up over there, so you really can't see much on that side. Anyway, Sharon, she's laying there, and she's watching a bunch of these uh, vultures fly around up, up above the trees, just flying around, circling around and stuff. You know, she's wondering what's dead laying over there. So pretty soon, they all drop down. When they drop down, you heard that horrendous roar. Hmm. All of a sudden, they all shot right back up in the air. Hmm. So then they're circling again. They're still circling. And she's amazed because she never thought she'd hear that sound. So all of a sudden, they all go down again, and that roar come off again. Then they, they got up and took off the left. They didn't circle no more. They just left. But uh, that's the only time that roar has ever been heard out there by Sharon. I didn't hear it, but Sharon did. So... Yeah, they're quite capable of making that sound. Yeah. Just we don't get that. We get little chirps and tweaks and just sometimes you hear a, a little grumble, they'll grumble at you. Uh it's all nice communicative type things that they do with us. Nothing nothing mean aggressive and like that you just have to be there to live it to understand it. So uh, well, I'm real happy I'm real happy with them. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, do, uh, I, I've heard some recordings where they sound like, I don't know, they're, they sound kind of, what do they call that? Infrasound? Yeah. They, I've heard people talk about the infrasound. That's what they, they get people upset in the gut with and all that stuff. Yeah. They're infrasound. Some of it sounds kind of dimensional to me. You know how they, it just sounds creepy. Right, right. Well, like I said, this is why they had that ability to ward off the uh, dinosaurs when it was here for that purpose. Yeah. That's why all this was built into them, and the aliens built that into them. And now, like I said on on video, you have good ones and bad ones as far as the foots are concerned, and now I'm, I'm able to separate that. That's a good. woman did a video. A woman did a uh, – sent a letter in to uh, Buckeye Bigfoot, and it was also on uh, – uh, how to hunt. They read the same story. We went to both places. This girl has made friends with the foots and she was having communication with them all the time. So one day she was out communicating with them, being around them. And all of a sudden this big, huge one showed up and the other ones just kind of gathered up and they were screaming, trying to communicate to her, which they did and told her to run, run, so she did. She ran to her house and uh, didn't know what for. And this big one kept hanging around. Never went in the house, but just hung around. So later, a couple of weeks later, uh, that clan that was coming by her showed back up. Now this is what's on the story. This is the story that's been told on Big on How to Hunt and on Buckeye Bigfoot. The uh, clan come back around, and she went out and talked to them and. Wanted to know, why should I run? She says, who was that? She says, that's the Bigfoot that kills people. Mm. And he said, especially, especially people like you that deal with us. Mm. Now, it wasn't long after that, I experienced a big, huge one come through our yard. And I thought it was a dog man. Because I never got to really see it. Sharon described it, what she could see of it. She said it looked like one, is it's twice the size of Clyde. Clyde was eight, eight, eight and a half foot tall. She said it was twice his size. So 
I just seen something go through the yard. She got, I was driving. I wasn't, I was trying to pay attention to my driving. Didn't want to hit nothing. It was kind of dark. <clears throat> anyway, she seen it and, uh, described it. She said it was a big bodybuilder, muscular thing. Just, and the first thing I'm thinking is that's a dog man. Dog man's the ones that are usually built like that. So I'm thinking it's a big dog man. Well, now, then I hear this story and like, wait a minute, uh, this guy ain't looking for me and pissed off because I'm dealing with his buddies. I'm, I'm missing something. Anyway, what I'm beginning to understand is these ones that don't want us talking to the other ones, these are under alien control. The aliens might not want this to happen because I think my critters, my foot critters, I think they have broken away from the alien control and want their independence. And the aliens, I don't think, want people like us associating with them hmm. because we do more to contribute to their uh, independence. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Now, my goal with this whole thing was to try to get the, the foots protected because I know them. You know, I know the good side of them. They don't need to be hunted and shot at and all the stuff people want to do to them. Just say, well, we got a body. We can experiment. Hey, man, screw your body and your experiment. I'm trying to get you something. I'm trying to get a video of me and them together. And I can get a sample of hair from them right in front of a camera. Maybe a blood sample or something. I'm trying to get the puts to go along with. I've asked them about it in Tennessee. I have never really got an answer. Well, after talking to Kawani Lasparitis, Kwani, he's in touch with everything, and he told me, you're never going to get that. He told me that will never happen. But I'm trying to get him to reveal himself somewhat to the fact that I can expose the fact that they are real. Leave them alone. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get people to do, leave them alone. They're my friends. It makes me sick every time I hear about somebody shooting at them and all this stuff going on. I mean, I never know if that's one that's been to my house before. You know, like, I've had a lot of them there. You know, they're, they're my friends. And, like, it really upsets me to think that somebody's out there trying to kill my friends. Yeah. So that was my idea to try to get them protected. And I did confront with the, with the uh, elders of the Tennessee tribe, the clan down there. So I made arrangements to talk to them. The, the elders showed up, and uh, I discussed everything, told them what I was trying to do. I kind of got an answer, but I'm not sure, and nothing really has come back because that's something that I think all the clans have to have to get together and discuss before they do something like that. So maybe it's been turned down or whatever, but I haven't been letting nothing know yet. But that was my plan for me to do a video with one of the foots, hold me up in the air, proving they're real, real, and you know, like this is what you got, you know, and. Maybe even have them disappear right in front of the camera just to show people this is what they can do. Do you want to mess with that? Leave them alone. You know, the bottom line of this is if these guys, let me put it this way, I could take five of them foots with their powers and abilities and clean out a whole town. Mm. They have that kind of a power, mm -hmm. but they don't do that. So what I'm saying is quit pissing them off. Uh, yeah. You know, don't drive them to where they have to be protective and start being harmful to people just to protect themselves. So, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going with what I think, and uh, I'm not getting a real answer from them to, to to really know. But that's that was my thought. Kawani said it ain't going to work, so maybe he's right. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, that's where I'm at with all that. And uh, like I say, for. Some, I can go on for hours with some of this stuff that I've <laughs> but it just there's so much of it. So you, you wanna want you, you wanna talk a few minutes about uh what was it, the uh dog man? Yeah, yeah, I can tell you a little bit I can tell you what I what I can about it. Well let's take a let us take a quick break and uh Sh sure. And when we come back We'll do a, just a you know a few minutes on the dog man before we have to get off here. Sure, okay. no problem. All right, you're listening to uh, Jason and David Paranormal Four One One. 
And we are talking with uh, Stacy Hazlitt about his life with the Bigfoot, right? Yep. And um, these are some good stories. And uh, we may not get them all, but maybe we'll have him back on and, and get to listen to a little bit more. And uh, we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be right back. And we will make it a quick break. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Paranormal411. Join us on the website at Paranormal411.org. It's free to sign up and become a member. All of our upcoming shows are on the guest and events page. You can also listen to past shows on the website as well. And if you like the show and want to support us, you can do that by becoming a premium member for only $2 a month. Thanks for listening to Paranormal 411. Join us. I woke up this morning, lit a cigarette, my head still spinning with all your regrets. I should have known all along it was gonna end up like this. You've been calling all night on the telephone I wish you would just leave me the hell all alone There's so many things about you, baby I don't think I'm gonna miss Oh, but I know, I know, I know I know It's just a matter of time Somebody 
You're listening to Paranormal 411. Coming to you live from an undisclosed location deep within the Appalachian Mountains. Bringing you the unknown with your hosts David Reagan and Jason Scott. Paranormal 411. All right, we're back after that quick little break. Uh, we still got Stacy on the line. And I, before we go back real quick, I was wanting to say uh, thanks to Catalyst uh, for letting us use their music. Oh, yeah. Go to bandlabs.com and you can look them up, Catalyst. and um, Catalyst East Tennessee. Tennessee. Yep, and they do excellent work. Uh, the good thing about Band Labs, you can sit there and listen to all their music tons and tons of times before it finally tells you that you listen to it too much. <laughs> um, but you could buy one song at a time or you could buy it a, an album at a time. So, uh, yeah, go definitely go check them out. Oh yeah. So Stacy, you still yeah. here? All right. Now we was going to, uh, listen to you talk about some dog man stuff too, that you've been experiencing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's new to me. Uh, some of my viewers, They've been able, been able to slow the cameras down or do whatever they do. And I had one of my viewers say they seen about 15 dog men in my woods. I was, I was, uh, setting up a video outside, outside my house with the woods behind me. And they're not sure how many now, but I think that's the original thought was. Then I've had another viewer say the same thing that they caught the same thing. They caught the dog man in my woods. So when I had that big one come through there, I thought that's what it was. I don't know. But anyway, the dog man is showing up at my house. And here the other day, Sharon was out on the uh, uh, picnic table out in front of the house. She had two little dogs with her. Our little dogs are really, the one in particular, he's real sensitive to the, to the, to the foots being around. Also, uh, orbs. The little one, he follows orbs around in the house when they're in the house. <clears throat> he can spot them, and we can't. Except for when the electric went out, that's how we found it. But anyway, that's another story. Anyhow, uh, Sharon's out on the uh, picnic table, and she's sitting there with the dogs, and all of a sudden, a force of some type just buzzed by her. She could feel a force. wasn't wind. She just, something went past her, and she knew it. Couldn't see it but she knew it. And when that happened, the little dogs went up on the porch and went in the house right now. They wanted in. So that was kind of like, uh, in my thought, the foots, because the foot, not the foots, but the, the dog man, the dog man moves like that. The dog man can be in front of you in one minute and, and another minute way off to the side and, and you don't see a move, but they're gone. You know, that's the way they work. I've heard the stories about them. So that seems the whole crew was what Sharon seen. Then the other night, uh, Sharon went out to let the little dogs outside. And as soon as she opened up the uh, storm door and stepped out on the porch, she could hear a little animal squealing like something had it, was doing something to it or something. And all of a sudden, it immediately stopped, like it snapped its neck or something, you know, that the sound just stopped. And then she heard footsteps walking away, seemed to be about maybe – I don't know, 100 feet, 200 feet away. I'm not sure of the distance, but it's it just inside the woods out, out around the house. And she could hear the footsteps. So Jack, Jack Quinn, he's the one that knows a lot about the uh, dog man. I call him my expert. He don't like that, but I call him my expert because he knows much more than I do about him. Anyway, he's helped me evaluate it, and he's thinking that uh, they're there. He thinks they're there to protect me. That's what he thinks. It's got something to do with protecting me, possibly from that one. If it is an evil Bigfoot, that's what he thinks they're there to protect me from. But we're just guessing. But he says these things are doing like buzzing by Sharon and, and doing that squealing thing with whatever. They're kind of warming up to us. Yeah. But like they're letting us know, don't let them dogs run because somebody's going to eat them. Maybe me, you know. So anyway. It's like they're just doing little things to gradually warm up to us. This is what I, the, the foots did with me. You know, they left the stones, and then they did little things, and here and there. 
until they eventually let us know exactly what's up. So hopefully that might be what the dog man's doing. And if so, that's good, you know, as long as they you know, have no ill intentions, uh, I can get along with them. I'd like to learn about them. Well, you know, and a lot of the encounters with the dog man is pretty aggressive. Yeah, that's I've, a lot of stuff that I've heard, like up in Ohio area and, and a lot of those places, they've had some supposed pretty bad stuff. Like chewing up cars and, and all kinds of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I know that's that, you know, that's kind of a worry, but you know, like I said, I've, I've my whole life, I've never had enough sense to be afraid of anything. And these guys don't scare me either. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to eat me, you know, that's going to yeah. happen. That happens. But the bottom line of it is, <laughs> I think my lack of fear is beneficial to dealing with them because as long as I'm not afraid of them, you know, I'm not going to try to hurt them. Right. It's like, you know, dogs. Dogs themselves, if you're around a dog and you're really scared of a dog, you're subject to get bit if dogs got a, a bit of aggression in them because they know that fear can cause trouble for them. And I think that that's why I've gotten as far as I have with the foots. You know, I've never been afraid of them. And right now I'm not afraid of the dog, man. I'm, we're here, you know, how are you going to act? So we'll see how that goes. And uh, uh, Jack Quinn, he's going to help me out a lot on it. He's got connections to where the dog man is he's got some pictures he has some written history on him that written from people who own the land uh he's pretty he's a lot into it so he believes in me because he he's been around some of the stuff i've been around i've showed him things and he has total belief in what i tell him and uh we're going to try to partner up on this thing with the dog man see what i come up with now here's something that i put out on my videos that I stand by no matter what. Uh, this is my first offer on my first video. I am willing to polygraph for anybody that wants to question me about what I say about my foots. I'll take a polygraph test about everything I have to say. And the only condition is if I polygraph for somebody, they have to publicize the results. Good, bad, or indifferent. I know what they'll be. That is a must, and I offer that to anybody. Offer that to anybody, because you know that's the only way I got to verify anything. Right now, I don't have a foot to bring in front of a camera and say, "Here it is." I'm just telling the truth of what I know, and I'm willing to take a polygraph over it. So, that's my offer. That's the best I can do. Well, you, you know, know, when uh, back in the '80s, when um, Mount St. Helens erupted, there was a guy that that could talk to. He, he came in because they were Bigfoots up there and the military was trying to help them because they, they were dying. And this guy came in that could talk to the, talk to them and everything and understood them. And it was like, he was their friends. Yeah. I mean, why can we believe if we believe that, why couldn't we believe, you know what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, let me tell you what the military knows all about them. Right. No, no trade was all about them. Years ago, uh, in the 60s, I think, the CIA thought they captured one. Now, this I had this on the Internet through a college kid showed it to me. I had no idea what a Bigfoot was or anything about this. This college kid showed me this thing, what he had on, on his Internet thing. CIA captured a Bigfoot, which they didn't capture him. He just let him, let him have him. He went into wherever they had him, whatever, not a cage or a room, something they had him in. He's in there, and pretty soon he just turned into a big puff of light and was gone. Huh. He just showed he just showed the CIA, this is what you're messing with. You need to quit. And they did. But they thought they was really doing something because they caught something. They didn't catch him. He gave it up. He said, I'm going to show you guys something, and he did. They're smart. They're very, very intelligent, far beyond us. Yeah. They're way beyond us in intelligence. And people need to realize that. This is what they're dealing with. So anyway, like I said, all I can do to prove it is I'll polygraph for anybody if they publicize the results. I got no reason to lie. You know, there's a lot of a lot of humiliation could come from less when I do this. I haven't gotten much because people that know me 
my people around my life know I don't lie about nothing. Right. You know, in in my view, if you're a liar, you get caught. And if you get caught as a liar, you're an asshole. And I'm not fitting into that. <laughs> that, that just, I'm, I'm just not doing that. Right. Now, yeah. I've, I've got no reason to lie to nobody. I, I, you know, nothing, nothing puts me in enough fear to lie. You know, that's, that's part of not being afraid of thinking. As a matter of fact, I just realized I'm not a religious person, but it's in the Bible. God says to fear or not. I don't. That's what comes with me. I don't fear anything. Maybe it's God's word doing that. I don't know. But this word has got me in my life. Yeah. So that's the best I can tell you for now. There's a lot of other things I, I, I could get into, but boy, it just gets so long and involved. Just a lot of little things. But, uh, you know, I almost forgot to tell you about the portal, you know. Uh, and, you know, Sharon's got her review of this thing. You know, she's in the thing that they've come from demonic means. She's almost at a point where, she thinks that the foot's idea was are good somewhat, but she knows there's mean ones, the demonic ones, which I always say there was good and bad foots, like those good and bad people. Well, I think the separation comes from the ones that are still under alien control because we do have aliens here. I mean, you are aware of that, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. We've, we've had quite a few people yeah. on, uh, you know, talking about experiences and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any experiences with it, but I know of. Uh, Sharon and her sister were, when they were little, they they thought they'd seen aliens or something. Well, her sister, she's passed away now, but she used to have a piece of metal in her neck that nobody had no idea where it come from. They th Sharon seemed to think they might have been abducted when they were little girls. So I got a way of proving none of that, but that's Sharon's thought, and... Uh, you never know. We have um, someone in the chat room, uh, Christina. She asked a question. She says, do you think that the aliens uh, don't want us to communicate with the Bigfoot because because they use them as bodyguards and the aliens think that we might do the same if they break away from them? No, I'm thinking, no. My thought on that is that uh, the uh, aliens actually don't want us associating with them because they don't want us understanding everything. Not yet. And I think that's why the one big one run that girl off into her house. And then the other one told her later that that's the one that kills humans that deal with the Bigfoots. The ones that are, I think, broken away from the alien control. Yeah. I think, I think I was told by Robin Lynn when I first, oh, let's get into another story. When me and Robin was talking one time, I was, Sharon was talking about going down to see her sister in Tennessee. And Robin asked me, she says, where are you going? I said, oh, I don't know. Her sister's down in Tennessee somewhere. And Robin said to me, I have to know where you're going. And like, I've never met this lady. I said, lady, what are you talking about? I don't tell my wife where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, she says, you don't understand. No, I don't. She says, you have become part of their clan. What? They consider you part of their clan. And the problem is there's clans that don't like other clans. You can't go just anywhere. Okay. So we figured out where I told her a general area where I was going. So when I talked to her again, she says, listen, you go down there, you're going to have a meet and greet. What? <laughs> You'll have a meet and greet when you get down there. So we go down to Sharon's house or Sharon's sister's house. And I did, I met with other foots. That's, I got involved with another clan. But on the way down, this is the part that I brought up earlier. I didn't get to finish out. Uh, Steve from How to Hunt, he doesn't believe that the foots have the ability to see through other animals' eyes. Now, let me ask you guys something. How many times have you ever went down the road and seen an owl up on a line? In the middle of the day. Have you ever? No. I don't think I have. I, I think I see more hawks than I do owls. I haven't seen well, an owl really at all. Well, here's what he got. I got down to uh, the, uh, let's see, what was it, the Ohio border, going through Kentucky. And uh, 
we hit the border, I seen some, I seen an owl up on a line. I thought that was kind of unusual. Well, about 20 miles later, I see another owl up on a line. This is a long highway down there. Another 20, 30 miles, I see another owl. Altogether, the time we got to Sharon's sister's house, I seen 10, at least 10 to 15 owls on lines. I'm like, what the hell? Then when we got to Sharon's sister's house, uh, we got to her house, it was an owl. Harry Potter stuff right there, ain't it? Well, the owl was sitting on Sharon's sister's gate when we pulled in. Wow. Now, that's a fact. Like I said, I'll polygraph any of this. That's spooky but right that's, there. That is. That would be spooky. Well, it just it tells me I was supposed to be there. Uh, that Robin Lynn set this up. Mm-hmm. The foots knew I was coming, and they was watching me the whole time coming down there through the owl's eyes. Now, Steve from How to Hunt, he don't believe that's possible. But you give me another explanation for it, and I'll probably go along with it. But I don't there is one. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I I wouldn't be able to give any kind of an explanation to be able to see that many kind of owls because they're usually no, nocturnal. I, I mean, to see them during the day yeah. would, be, would be crazy. Exactly. You know, and like, it just it blew my mind. I, I asked Sharon when we was on the way down, I said, what the hell is this, owl mating season? You know, we discussed it. <laughs> I mean, this is what this is what we discussed, you know. But, uh, yeah, they have that ability. Whether anybody wants to believe it or not, that's up to them. But I've been through it. And they were just kind of watching to see where I was going to see if anything happened to me or whatever. Because apparently I must have went through some territory where there's other foots that didn't get along with my clan. So, anyway, I have a clan down there that I meet with. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get down there with them because Sharon's sister passed away. And I really don't have any reason to be down there. I don't have no place to stay or nothing like that. So. What, what part of Tennessee is it? Uh, you know where? Hmm, you know where? Uh, oh man, wait a minute. It'll come to me. Uh, one town right there by it. Anyway, it's, it's around Watertown. You ever heard of Watertown? No. There's been a lot of. There's been a lot of sightings down there I didn't know about. There's been a lot of sightings. And uh, that's where they sent me. That's where I went. And that's where I met with Sharon's sister. And uh, that's where they were at. Yeah, but there's been a lot of sightings in that in that area. And uh, that's what happened. And, like, <laughs> the owl blew me away. It was on the gate. And when we pulled up, it was on the gate sitting there watching me. And I walked. I was within five foot of it. And it sat there for a few minutes. And then finally it flew away. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Yes, it's, it is. Yes, down, it is. But this is my life. This is my life with them. Okay, water is, my life. is down below Lebanon. That's middle, Lebanon. Middle Lebanon. Tennessee. That's what I could. Yep. Yeah, Lebanon. I couldn't get Lebanon out of my mouth. There's yep. a Lebanon here in Ohio too. Yep. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. Yep, not far from Lebanon. Yep. That's so just outside of Nashville. That, so. Yeah, that's that's where we stayed in the motel at most of the time. We went down to see your sister was in Lebanon. Used to be, uh, they have a uh, Cracker Barrel. Their corporate office is down there, and they had a motel executives in, and it burned up. So uh, I don't know who owns it now, but yeah, that's where we spent our time. Anyhow, uh, that's some of the weird stuff. Like I said, there's a lot of it. I just can't think of all of it right now. You know, just uh, it's my life. It's it's what me and yeah. Sharon put up with. We don't put up. With, I enjoy it. Sharon, she she wonders about it a lot. Right. Well, that's. But, that's a dang good story as far as what you told us, though. I mean, uh, it's it's really fascinating. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, well, I've lived it, and like I said, I'll polygraph for anybody that doubts me. It don't matter. Right. They just got to publicize the results. I'm perfectly willing. So uh, don't ask me, don't ask me about other things. I've lived a wild life and I admit to nothing. <laughs> but, uh, I thought I seen you at that strip club in Ohio. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 seriously. Uh, uh, when you get, I'll, I'll we'll keep up with your videos. And when you, you know, when you get some new stuff, we'd love for you to come back on the show and yeah. And talk to more. us. Hopefully, you can, you can uh, meet up with us at the Bigfoot Conference this year or next year. Yeah, we'll have us a booth there again, Gatlinburg. Like like yeah, it might year. be good. 
That'd be good if I can arrange to get there. It depends on what's going on with the government and what's going on with this crazy thing happening now. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, pre- I predicted this four years ago, man, and it was, I didn't predict it. It just come out of my mouth. I don't know how to explain that. But I was right on the money with everything I said. And as a matter of fact, at a point of, I told, I told Matt at the time, I said, when Trump gets done taking all the money back from all the people stole from us over all these years, we're going to get a paycheck. Guess what? That's on the line right now. Yeah. That's on the line. So I called this out four years ago. This is the ability that I have. Now, don't ask me to go look at something, to try to figure out something, to tell you what's going to happen with something. I don't know. These things just pop into me. They just pop into me. So, um, Let everybody know how they could um, get to your YouTube site and any way that they could uh, contact you or anything okay, like that. I'm a, okay. Uh, I have a, uh email address. It's called thefootline at hotmail.com. And my YouTube is uh, My Life with the Bigfoot Clan as they want it. Or you can type my name in, Stacy Haslett. But you have to go to the first video and work your way back to understand what all's going on. If you get in the middle of the video somewhere, you won't know what's happening. But uh, anyway, I'm on uh, Rumble. I just started doing a Rumble thing, and I got a couple videos on there. My videos on YouTube, I got about 40 of them. Uh, Rumble, I just got a few just getting started, which I refer to people to go to Rumble to go to YouTube to get caught up on what's up so I don't have to put it all on the rumble. And uh my rumble my rumble uh number to get to rumble is uh S T A C that's part of my name and nineteen forty eight that's when I was year I was born. Okay. So that's that that's how you get a hold of that on Rumble. And that's gonna have all the current stuff I can say more on Rumble. I've said more on Rumble because Things I just don't. I never brought things up too much about uh, the government or nothing like that on YouTube. Right. You know, I, all I've ever told people on YouTube is, is trust what I'm saying. Things are going to be better. As bad as they are now, it's all going to be better. The corrupt will be gone. The corruption will be gone, and the corrupt will be dealt with. And that's what's going on right now. And that's all I can say on YouTube. Yeah. You know. I just want to give people reassurance that things are happening good. I hope you're right because, you know, this this place is getting bad. Well, all I can say is some of the things I, I, I come out of my mouth that day are happening now, exactly like I said, which tells me that everything I've seen must be going to happen. And if it's going to be like I've seen, it's all going to be good. Yeah. Uh, before, so, before you get uh, – I'm going to tell you, I'm going to probably text you later and give you all the the websites and stuff that you can put on your uh, YouTube channel for, 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 for people to hear this show because uh-huh. the ones you had on the video, the, uh, they wasn't exactly right. So I didn't get them right. No, <laughs> that figures. But uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll text you uh, where they can listen to us, and uh, you can put that on your next video or whatever. I mean, it this is a this is a pretty interesting show right here, and I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I definitely appreciate well, you too. Well, I'm glad I'm glad, and uh, I'm glad I appreciate you guys letting me put it out because I'm just trying to get the word out, the honest truth about the foots, and uh, they're not all bad. Like I said, the bad ones I think are just alien oriented and you're just still tied up with the aliens. And that's where I think the bad comes from. I could be wrong, you know, but that's the way I'm I'm taking it. Okay. So let's we'll see how it all works out. Well, Stacy, we, we appreciate it and I guess we're gonna uh let you go so <clears throat> we can get off here and end the show. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate you letting me on here. Hey, I'll uh, I'll message you though all those websites and stuff, and uh, okay, uh, we'll talk to you later. All righty, thank all you. Right. All right, welcome. thank you. You have a good night. Okay, you too. Bye bye. All right, bye. Oh man, that was pretty good, interesting stuff. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm I don't know. That was some good stories. Yeah. Some really good stories. And um, I mean, he's willing to take a, a polygraph 
and uh, you can't beat that. No. Um, remember next week um, oh, yeah. we have a um, a person that's been on several times, and um, she is awesome, Miss Lori Hines. Um, she is a psychic and. Oh, and yeah. uh, very knowledgeable about a lot of stuff. Uh, she will do some readings for us while she's on. So, um, yeah, bird dog. She's going to be doing some readings. She'll be so doing some readings. So people, tell your wife. Yeah, we'll have some people, um, all you people on Podbean. Uh, we'll open up the phone lines uh, sometime during about the middle of the show, and and uh, so you could call in. And um, so it's it's, I think it's going to be a great show. Every time we have, uh, you know, Lori Hines on, we have a great show. Yes, she's 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 a really good guest, um, and uh, we love having her on. So, um, but yeah, everybody, definitely next week, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, we will have Lori Hines on, and um, she's she is a good she's good she's she's a really good psychic too. I've uh, the wife and I have actually called her and, and had a reading done, and and it was it was pretty 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 awesome. Oh so, yeah, we enjoyed it. Maybe if David will ever go back to work, we can do a couple of little short shows through the week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go back to work at some point. I promise. Get to work, <laughs> you lazy bum. Um, I hurt my back, so um, just a little bit, not much, but you know, being a truck driver driving down the road on these bumpy roads that we have here in this country right now, uh, it ain't no fun when your when your back ain't feeling good. So, um. But, um, yep. I want to thank everybody that showed up tonight, um, and listened to the show. And, but I also want to thank everybody that's going to listen to the podcast later on. Um, because we have some people, some, some people that listen to us in, in all different countries. So, um, oh yeah, quite a few people sleeping right now. I do want, I want us to thank, uh, one of our premium members too. Uh, he's helping us with, uh, the new logo. Um, and it's looking real good. Our, we got, you know, partial of it up right now. Yeah. Uh, just, and it looks fabulous like it is. Yeah. yeah he ain't even done. <laughs> he ain't even done with it. And, yes. uh, Steve Manser, he's from the UK and, and he is a really great guy. And I just want to say thank you. Absolutely. Uh, for what you're doing. Yes. Yes. We, Jason and I thank you a lot for, um, helping us with the design of this logo and, and, uh, and everything like that. That's, um, it's fantastic. All right. Well, is that it, Jason? That's it. Done? Yep. All right, everybody. Remember, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lori Hines next week. And, uh, you know, oh, Bird Dog says time change tonight. Everybody remember, change clocks tonight. We fall back. Yeah, only in the United States. Yep. Well, and it depends on where you are. There's several states in the U.S. that that doesn't do time change. Really? Yep. Several several states. How does that work? They... Uh, done what Tennessee's tried to do four times and, and each time they don't pass it, but, um, there's no sense in the time change. It doesn't really do any different. The sun's still out the same number of hours, no matter what you do, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we as crazy hairless apes think that we could change things. So hey, we ain't apes. <laughs> uh, we crazy humans believe we could change things because, you know, we have the power. We're just visitors. We have been implanted like the, like the foots, the foots. You're going to start calling them the foots now. <laughs> ah, that's a good it's kinda, name. It's kind of neat. It's, it's, it's different. It's different. So I like it. Um, <laughs> but, um, we're going to get out of here, everybody. And, uh, we'll see everybody next week. And like Jason says, if, um, I am on the road next week, we'll do a couple of, uh, of our 30 minute shows. Oh yeah. So, um, everybody have a good night. Someone or something crawling around out here. Did you see what it was? Was it a person or an animal? Or I can't tell. All I know is that my central light came on, and I just happened to glimpse and see this thing running across the yard. Uh, a good-sized man or something looks like a man. I don't know what it was. Just it, it ran across the yard. Okay. You've had problems in the neighborhood before? Yeah, my dog was killed here just recently. I don't know what it was, whatever it is. It's running. I couldn't catch it if I was going to chase it. Somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about.
You're listening to Paranormal 411. Coming to you live from an undisclosed location deep within the Appalachian Mountains. Bringing you the unknown with your hosts David Reagan and Jason Scott. Paranormal 411. 